2022. This is the moment for the EU to adjust to new post-pandemic realities. Europeans are increasingly concerned about inflation. Energy prices increased by 27% from October 2020 to October 2021. The COVID-19 pandemic has made it more difficult to get supplies and consumers are paying more for their purchases from fuel to housing. These pressures on prices could persist for another year or more and our economic challenges do not end there. 800 billion euros should help member states recover from the pandemic while designing a new EU that works for everyone. This year, schools' computer systems could be upgraded, public water supply networks could be reconstructed, and private buildings could undergo energy-efficient renovations. Will member states manage to implement their recovery plans by 2026? So far, six in 10 Europeans believe so. Additional resources will also help the agri-food sector become more sustainable. Seven in 10 Europeans agree that the agriculture industry should change the way it works. Next year, the new common agricultural policy will introduce eco-schemes and reward farmers for taking care of the environment. Now is the time for more organic farming and crop varieties in the fields. Yet, we need more to address environmental degradation and climate change. Radical decoupling will be crucial to grow our economy while achieving climate neutrality by 2050. Nine in ten Europeans think it is very important that policymakers set ambitious targets to increase the use of renewable energy by 2030. For instance, heavy industry must phase out coal power. And to boost the transition, knowledge sharing and innovation will be key. In fact, climate issues are increasingly solved by digital technologies. Smart home appliances can already help you save energy. And the number of connected devices will increase by six times from 2020 to 2030 worldwide. Yet they can only work if there is a free data flow. And the more devices are connected, the more they can be hacked. On the one hand, we have to guarantee a free data flow and address cyber threats. On the other hand, we must ensure that systems can talk to each other and that no artificial barriers to trade are introduced. Citizens have also discussed Europe's digital future during the Conference on the Future of Europe, which should end this spring. The topic of European democracy was one of the highlights in citizens' discussions. Some suggested boosting citizens' representation by using transnational lists and campaigns for elections to the European Parliament. These ideas are in line with the European Parliament's recommendation to develop permanent mechanisms involving citizens in EU decision-making, beyond the traditional electoral period. Yet, EU democracy will never be complete without true equality. Today, same-sex parents can still encounter difficulties when crossing borders. They might not be recognized as the parents of their own children, who could even be removed from their care. The European Parliament has already pushed for mutual recognition of family relations in the EU. The Free Movement Directive guidelines dating from 2009 should be reviewed this year, bringing the EU a step closer to a union of equality. Unity will also be essential in maintaining peace and security. The endorsement of the EU's strategic compass could lead to the establishment of an EU rapid deployment capacity by 2025. The EU could deploy a joint military intervention force of up to 5,000 troops on land, in the air and at sea. The idea that the EU should deliver on security and defence has become increasingly important to citizens, as the global environment becomes less predictable. A new joint declaration with NATO will also reinforce cooperation in tackling climate change or cyber attacks. Our industry has also been facing new threats. Semiconductor chips power the world's digital transformation. But their production is very complex, as it involves over 1,000 steps. Chips cross international borders up to 70 times before reaching an end customer. The COVID-19 pandemic has made things more difficult and led to unprecedented chip shortages. You might still need some patience in waiting for your new car or internet router in the coming months. 
Yet, the European CHIPS Act will help the EU boost its production capacity in the long run. International cooperation will be key to getting back in the tech race, as it will be in the EU's fight to end proliferation of nuclear weapons. The threat from nuclear weapons is likely to increase this year. The EU has worked together with the new US administration to save the nuclear agreement with Iran, concluded six years ago. But these efforts might fail and could ultimately lead to military conflict with Iran. To help save the agreement, experts suggest that the EU should facilitate a regional dialogue on security issues with Iran and its Arab neighbors. They also recommend that the EU promote civilian nuclear cooperation around the Persian Gulf. This could ensure the peaceful nature of all nuclear energy programs in the region in the future.